Hey, <laughs> welcome out there. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. Uh, I'm coming to you live from the Mega 64 studios. You know, as we're all under quarantine, we're trying to do a little bit more here. Everyone's pulling their own weight. I'm trying to do my part, and I've brought in some action figures. I have yet... Record scratch. <laughs> I have yet <laughs> to open. I've got uh, Vulcan Log uh, Metal Gear Solid figure here from the Phantom Pain release. It's quite old at this point. And then I've also got over here a wonderful Mafex Evangelion figure. This one was given to me by Rocco Bodie himself. <laughs> The figure master, the figure maniac, uh, B-Boy Bodie himself. The dance class. That's Sean. There's Rocco. Thank you. Well, this show is going to be interesting. I've got the lights on all the way up in the PPS studio. I am checking the chat. Everything uh, seems to be good. Could I get some number ones in there if my audio is all right? Looks good to me. I see uh, <laughs> I see some ones in there. A little different setup uh, than I'm usually doing when I'm streaming in here. But uh, without further delay, let's get right in. What do you guys want first? I think we had a little tease here of the song. Let's start with a little solid snake action. Uh, or Venom Snake in this case. This is the Phantom Pain figure, and we got a little background accoutrement here. The Mondo Records Metal Gear Solid soundtrack. Peep that. 180 gram vinyl. Woo! Beautiful artwork, front, back, and a little leaflet inside with the track listing. You got two discs here from Mondo. I guess this would technically be the third item we're uh, going to be unboxing here on the stream since I just opened this baby up. So let's get into it. The Venom Snake from the Vulcan Log, which is interesting. These, uh, these Vulcan Log uh, figures I had never heard of. I had never heard of Union Creative, but I have definitely heard of uh, Kaido and the uh, Revoltech name. I'm uh, pretty familiar with a lot of the Revoltech figures. Most of the Evangelion figures that I collect are... Uh, my favorite ones are the Revoltechs. Always had a soft spot for those. But uh, <sighs> let's get right into it. Union Creative, I guess, partnered with uh, Vulcan Log, I'm not exactly sure, but it is produced probably out of the same, uh, looks all the same Revoltech style parts uh, that I'm used to from this company. All right, so right off the bat, shit, I ripped the box. That's a no no, not gonna wanna do that. Yeah. Uh, but I can see this guy's, he's jammed full of accessories here. I should do the box uh, on all sides, right? To be very official. This is going to be an, an, a true unboxing. We got here, 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 here. What was that video that uh, some kid kept doing with his VHS on our uh, Martin Luther King stream? Oh, looks like it also comes with, oh yeah, make your own Diamond Dogs cardboard box in OD green. That's beautiful. Yeah, some paper craft there. Oh my god, I'm on fire calling it out in the chat. We are monitoring the chat. You can join us. A lot of uh, different poses I'd like to try here too. We've got the laying down sniper. We've got uh, rocket punch. A, f a few different options. Let's... Uh, Let's see, we've got a standard stand here in the back. Oh, with some action dirt. Some of the Evangelion figures, the Revoltex I have, started coming with this, like, um... It's a base 
uh, where you can put the character's foot in the peg, and they will stand there, but it's also like an action pose of, I don't know, dirt flying off the ground. That's kind of cool. So your standard uh, Kaido base, Revoltech base, three points of articulation on the support arm, and a little clamp kind of job here to hold the character. We'll get to this in just a sec. Main item here, though. Ah, nothing like the smell, also, I'd like to point out. The smell of a new figure is something that I, I just can't describe. It's like a urethane chemical, um, I don't know. You would think it's uh, akin to huffing or kind of getting you high in some way, but no, not at all. Just the pure vibes of a fresh new fig. Oh my God. This is a good one too. You got a hot, you got a, a real, a yeasty urethane smell there. A real hot hopper ready for you. Mm. Not since the McFarlane Quake 2 figures have I smelled this much. Oh, that's fucking good. That's a, this is a good one. All right, back to the show. Uh, hey. hey. We're getting back to it. Don't worry. <laughs> okay, Snake. Well. How do people do this? I guess they have a trash pile. All right. All right, right off the bat, I want to go into accessories. Looks like we've got your standard FAMAS. Uh, let's see if we get a lot of focus on that. Yeah, that's your FAMAS. Looks like a light uh, accessory attached to the side. See your bullpup design. Rear loading magazine. Gives you a longer barrel for more accuracy with a shorter form. Compact weapon. With the distance and range of a rifle. Look at that. Beautiful. Okay. Speaking of rifles, you got, uh, I forget what this was actually called out in the game. Maybe the chat can, uh, jump in and help me, but this was, uh, one of the later sniper rifles you could develop in the game. I think one of the most powerful ones. I remember because of that unique flash hider on the tip there. Ooh, that is, uh, I do not know if this is a PSG-1. I believe this is, the chat saying PSG-1, but I, I thought that this was um, the anti-material rifle or something big like that. Yeah, this is uh, Phantom Pain, not, don't let the soundtrack fool you. Okay. Music too loud or still a number one in the chat for the levels? My voice versus the music. Ooh little knife looks like a progressive knife we get a little shine on that thing look at that bam all right uh different orientations here i see for the anti-material rifle you could put the look at this it's a, an accessory to put the bipod forward or an accessory to have the bipod open kind of have that in a oh that works good for close-ups I just put my hand up against for the autofocus wow look at that vented flash hider on there with the 8 magnification scope Whew. that's a dangerous weapon there okay back to uh, weaponry here we got your pistol this is your trank gun for sure that 22, I forget what they call that one too. There's a more of a technical name for the Trank gun in the Phantom Pain, but that's a beautiful sight. And then uh, looks like we've got, aside from the two hands he comes with, three red right hands, just like the Nick Cave song. Uh, you've got, of course, trigger finger. Or these are left hands, excuse me. I'm getting my left and right's confused. You got trigger finger, you got peace. Look at that one. Peace. And then another fist. He comes with a... 
Oh, I guess it's pointing and a fist. So we got a lot of hand options. I never end up using or switching out the hand options once I pick them the first time. They just go in a little bag. I've got a whole box full of action figure hands. And holy shit, there's a lot at this point. I've also got three uh, gloved, I guess this would be the right hand here. A couple of faint trigger articulations, some pointing, uh, whatnot. Good detail though on the glove and everything. Got that little strap going across the back. Okay. Now he comes with the default red arm, but then the, uh, I think the blast arm or the rocket arm that has a different kind of logo and was a different color scheme. He comes with that. It's even got the watch on it as well. Nice. Okay. Oh, got to have your eye droid. You know, if you're out in the field, you want to pull up the map, you want to call back to uh, Miller on Mother Base, that iDroid's going to get it for you. Can we get a close-up? of Look at the detail. Oh, my God. It's out there. <laughs> All right. And last but not least, the man himself. Oh, now what's this? Looks like, hmm, small piece of plastic, unidentifiable as of yet. I know that there's a cigar in here too, because I saw that floating around loose in the box. That might, that might have ended up on the floor. Might have to find that later. <laughs> hmm. Okay, okay. Here's a cigar, tiny. The Phantom Cigar allows you to travel. Uh, Kind of through time in the game, it let, allows time to speed up. Uh, let's clear off our blister packaging now. We've got everything else. Oh, you know what these are? These two little tools that the Revoltex come with are so you can go in and articulate the eye position and some other things in the head. A uh, lot of plastic on some of the parts here, so I'm going to be removing that. Hmm. This always uh, came off as a little tricky because I want to pull slowly, break one side of the plastic. <sighs> get it? Oh, and then let it come out or else you get little pieces still stuck in there. There's one more. Hmm. Oh, I got a grip. Okay, there we go. Hey. We're back. We're back. Don't worry. Oh, now. Uh, so many points of articulation, I'm not going to count. But, I mean, let's get some close-ups on some body parts here. Uh, pretty, pretty good likeness. If I can get that to focus. Let me force an autofocus here for a sec. We have the technology. And there we are. So right away, I mean, great likeness. You've got the scarring, you got the eye patch and the uh, demon shrapnel, as well as an earpiece. Oh. And who can forget the ponytail? Uh, Venom Snake, unique for having the ponytail. This is the sneaking suit from the new game. So this version is uh, kind of your last unlock. Unless you're doing weird shit like silver and gold colors. But th getting this suit was pretty high, high priority for me. As it uh, kept you from making footstep noises in the game. It also gave you a certain ability to uh, resist incoming bullets and shrapnel. You got the Diamond Dogs logo. What a 
let's get a little look at that tiny tiny little decal printed perfectly on the arm there again with the perfect watch the sony walkman as well it's a nice touch no cassette tape from the man who sold the world that would be i'd be asking a little much for such a small figure uh looks like the pistol can be stored on the back side it's hollow so if you want you can throw it in and it should lie flat against the snake's body yeah let me lift that arm up peep that oh yeah uh we've got a small medic pouch canteen butt pouch your uh, dangling clip this is a big feature in the game this would clang and rattle and swing in the wind whenever you ran good to see it made it in mm -hmm. some type of uh, harness I guess that hangs off you know probably attaches his Fultons to it so that he can parachute away uh, I'm gonna go in I'm gonna I'm not gonna change the eye position I think the eye is in a good position where it's at but you can do that with these little tiny tools that they sell or they that they come with this little guy goes in and you can put that in the back of his head and move his eyes around but I think we're okay uh, well let's pose our friend shall we give him a little posture set him up with a gun why not throwing back on my autofocus and go into my quad cam here I'm gonna use the stand for this this would make more sense with the stand right now typically though I don't display figures with the the aid of a stand I'll just kind of look at the back of the box find a pose I like in this case I do kind of like one knee down kneeling with the V victory symbol above his eyes but I think I I have a couple other figures in that same pose but, you know standard standing and reloading the pistol yeah, it's beautiful too oh you can even throw the gun on his back oh that's an interesting thing the in-game appearance of weapons would always be hanging off your back and you can do that again I'm gonna switch the bipods here and uh, you can clip this right onto his back through a peg and then it stays like in-game attached that's pretty cool I do I do like that all right so uh, a pose let's settle on a pose here Time is ticking and the soundtrack is ending. I'm gonna go for straight legs. Straight legs. As many weapons as this fool can carry. Pistols holstered. Let's let's throw in a trigger finger for the what is this? The right hand? Give him the FAMAS. He's got excellent uh, trigger discipline. I don't know if you can see this here, but the finger is outstretched. Kind of hard to get weapons uh, in characters' hands the right way. It's almost, it might aid me to put the hand on with the gun after the hand is clutching the trigger. Let me try that. Ooh. And let's try side two of disc one mm. and you got to hand it to mondo for coming out with this nuclear vinyl i mean that really blew me away i did not expect that when i opened it up got to keep track of my breathing i know that my nostrils are affecting the microphone here how's that sound better all right I'm gonna try to get his hand around here. Mm. We might have to go 
with a different weapon in this hand. Let me see. Sometimes I will say that the uh, the figures I collect are so small and so delicate. Some of the Revoltex, some of the NECA. Uh, I have the most problem with NECA stuff. They will break on you. Fuck. As I almost just did, or probably lost a piece. But uh, they're so fragile and so delicate that they will break on you if you're not careful. So uh, exercise extreme caution and just for shits and giggles, keep a little thing of super glue around. I definitely dropped a little piece that holds his hand on. And there ain't no way I'm finding that right now. So. Yeah. Gave it a shot. We'll have to do a thorough check at the end of the show here. <clears throat> but until then, I'm not going to be able to put this hand back on. <laughs> we'll just call this one unboxed. And let's move over to the Ava figure, shall we? Sorry. Short shrift on you there, Solid Snake. <clears throat> but I'll clear the table and we'll get something else set up here. Let me grab that record and make a perfect little stand here. Gotta hand it to him. I've had this figure sitting around for years and years. I mean, this came out with the release of the game. And uh, getting to unbox it and open it now, it really, really, really <laughs> turns me on to want to play that again. I have another figure that's always been, well, not always, but for a long time. There's another uh, Metal Gear 5. This is a Ground Zeroes Play Arts Kai. You can see in scale the difference here. I'm going to put his missing hand behind his arm or behind his body. Hand behind your back there. Uh, the scale, you know, quite different. But the price tag on these, probably about the same. Um, the uh, Revoltec line did increase in price over the years. They used to come in pretty reasonable, but, but now they, they get up there a little too expensive. So I usually receive them as gifts. I kind of stopped buying figures for myself lately. But uh, again, that one... I probably did pick up on a website when the game was about to be released. So that was a, a self pickup. But on to our second one. Turn this shit off. On to our second one. That's right. This one, a gift from my friend Rocco. Where is he? Was dance class. That's fucking Sean again. Thank you, Rocco. It's uh, the Mafex Unit 1 Awoken version. <laughs> this figure is uh, from the 2.0. Yeah, yeah. Evangelion 2.0. You cannot advance. It uh, distributed by Medicom Toy. They were the company I would say I know them for uh, Kubrick's. I have a lot of Kubrick uh, figures. And let's give it a whirl. Back to the table cam here. I busted out a nice white tablecloth for you guys today here. Nice new piece of butcher paper. All right. Let's see here. Oh, I like the detail on the box already. Oh, hold on. Let me give my... Got to do my quad box angles. Hold on. Let me shut this again. Come on, you. Get in there, you. Go to your room! Get in your room and be quiet! Okay, front, bottom, back, top, side, side. Now I'm going to rewind it and fast forward it. Okay, that's enough. Hey. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Some cool poses it shows you on here. It comes with a, I guess that's a, the core of Zerul there, that red. Interesting. Uh, 
It's also got the Halo, which uh, I'm a big fan of. Probably going to be posing them with the Halo. I am a real, real big fan of this awakened version of uh, Unit 1 here. I have so many Unit 1 action figures because <laughs> it's the biggest, most popular main character of the show. And I just uh, am almost done with purple Ava units. But this Awakened version has this alternate color scheme from the Rebuild movies, uh, which that's what still gets me. I, I still buy those every, every once in a while. And again, the inside of the box is a really, really well done. Uh, you've got the emergency kind of nerve blood type blue pattern. Oh, even there behind the window. Um, that's great. This uh, this character actually, I should tell you, is uh, so so important to me that I got a tattoo on this arm of the Awakened Unit One version. Maybe we'll end the stream with a little show and tell here, but for now, uh, back to our tabletop. You can see his legs kind of sticking out right there, but we'll get we'll get into that around the corner. Three tiers of blister pack here. You don't want everything to go everywhere when you pop these. Sometimes they just fucking fly. So, all right. Careful there. All right, another stand. Separate, separate tier of uh, blister pack here for just the hands. More hands than Snake came with. We've got, looks like, we had six extra hands for Snake. We're looking at 11 here. That's 11 fucking hands. <laughs> Shouts out, Mafex. Uh, I said earlier, this is my first Mafex figure. I don't know uh, if anyone in the chat has collected the Mafex line before, but... They seem like they've got a really nice paint job, a really nice, like, a matte kind of... I don't know if you... Just looking at the figure... Oops, we're losing a halo. Just looking at the figure right there, you can you can check out that nice matte finish. We'll do close-ups in a sec. Wow. All right, we already heard that song. Come on. Ah. Hey, that's better. <laughs> All right, instructions, who needs those? You got them, though. Uh, their stand has an extra point of articulation. Looks like four. Four points as well as two extra holes on the left and right, not center, to mount uh, the stand armature and then your standard kind of clamp for your character's waistline so let's start out here with accessories we've got we've got a few here is your power plug uh, whenever the Ava units run out of battery it's because this sucker got unplugged the umbilical line giving them all the uh, power then they got what two minutes left it's been a while. Uh, I didn't actually check out the show when it was on uh, Netflix. I've yet to do that, but one of these days I will get back in. Don't worry. I guess fucking we're just looping the main theme behind me here. Whatever. And back <laughs> to the close-up cam. Uh, we got a lot of hands, like I said. Some great kind of kung fu looking, maybe like, look how, and look how long the fingers are on that. If you were to pose him in some kind of like punching, like that would rip right through an AT field right there. Really long, look at the long fingernails. You know Unit 1's a woman with the long, beautiful, articulated hands there. Congrats, Shinji's mom. <laughs> Okay, you got your very common to see in the Ava figures, the splayed out hands. You kind of got the, you know, he's he's spreading that AT field, baby. Spread it. 
good uh, coloring on everything. Everything's there. This is a hand that uh, is specifically used to stop that core. Uh, he's got a hole and a peg kind of situation there. If I could get the, the let's see if I can get it out without it falling on the floor. There we go. The core is a translucent piece of plastic. It's actually uh, clear or semi-clear. It's a red tinted translucent orb that you can see through. That's cool. That's a nice touch that it's a different uh, type of plastic and it's a different paint job so that you can attach that hand right to it. But that, that's a cool effect. The way it catches the light and the way you'd be able to see through that on a shelf. Uh, we do have different hands here for the the energy arm. We've also got two two punching hands, two closed fist hands, uh, but several additional hands for the arm built of energy. Once it gets cut off in the show, or in this case, the film. Okay. Now, oh, tiny entry plugs, teeny tiny. So we've got a full scale uh, or a, a, a full entry plug all detailed out. Interesting to see that the little cockpit door is uh, up in the top half. And then you've got that little top half that just sticks up. I guess that would be something you could insert into the back of the figure so it would just stick all the way out if you didn't want to have a fully ejected entry plug. Oh, that's great. <laughs> uh, I talked before on this Halo. It's uh, it's interesting. It is designed very similar to the way the animation is drawn in that it's got these kind of jaggies. It's got these little buzzsaw tips. Uh, I'm going to use his horn here to pop out some of the other items uh breastplate to expose unit one's core so this would go on in the other formation aside uh from the one he has right now so the, the way the figure's built and comes out wow the paint job on this is fantastic and look a little piece of plastic here to protect our horn the uh bulging wide eyes standard uh all the printing down the side too is really good evangelion 01 test type you can see that pretty clearly unmuddled and that's a really really small font um good like i said like look at the top of the feet like a nice matte paint job that's really great details all the way down Everyone knows the pattern on the bottom of Aneva's shoes, and they are here as well. So good job, Mafex. <laughs> this uh, this configuration pre Zerul fight here looks nice, very lanky. But I am uh, more interested in the mouth open, the awakened uh, face, the chest having the core exposed, and what else? Oh, that's right. The arm. Let's just pop that arm off uh, right now. I, how do we get in here? Oh, 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 shit. Okay. There, we've done it. The arm is missing. I'm going to go back to my quad cam here for a sec. I'm going to uh, turn our autofocus off. Hey, there we are. And, uh, yeah, I want to arrange this character like... Here's the box. I got to go with the uh, the energy arm after it's cut off. And the mouth open, the awakened mouth, is always like screaming for vengeance. Screaming vengeance. He's like a Judas Priest fan, Yui Akari is, you know? That's, uh, that's how I'm going to pose our unit one here. So, oh, we're not done with accessories. Oh, no, no, no. Uh, what's really cool is that if you don't want to have... You, you could do this in stages, you know? Arm partially... Uh, oh, wow, there's like a little retention ring in here. The figure itself... It's interesting. The shoulder pylon is attached to part of the shoulder piece here. That's something that's... Usually they're attached around the arm, but the arm actually fits in under there. 
and there's like a little donut spacer and then it pops right in beautiful look at that uh i'm a big fan of this because we're we're like halfway to awaken state here like the arm's been removed and it's just a i love that it's just a little meat stump <laughs> with a fucking bone in the inside and you say to me garrett the yeva units are robots though how could there be bone in there oh you gotta check this show out sir let's uh let's jump ahead here and give him the head that uh we so crave and i do love that the eyes on this figure are like actually bulging they're three dimensionally protruding from the the face and the head it's it's it adds a nice effect uh where they're actually like bulged out there i like i do enjoy that i'm gonna go right back to a little manual focus can i oh please yeah That's that opened mouth that I I so crave in a Unit 1 figure. And a Unit 2, Beast Mode. Always go with the open mouth design. That's great. So uh, back to our pose here and our mid-transformation. Let's, let's take the little arm that we had off. Oh, I pulled part of it off. I need, I need more of it. <laughs> this is the fun part of uh messing with your figures is getting that articulation right and trying to pull the little pieces off there we go like i said again without breaking anything now the mafex stuff seems pretty sturdy from what i'm feeling here so far um i will say that uh i don't need the super glue yet i'm, I'm down to one missing piece from the snake figure on the floor we're going to solve that problem after the stream here but uh for now i do like the build quality a lot on these guys because it's 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 a little more i don't know if the plastic is different but it's it's more rigid i don't know it's just everything snaps in a little easier a little nicer than E, not so much the Revoltex. That Revoltex that we had before is a, is a small scale for Revoltex. Usually the Revoltex joint pieces, you know, it's it's like a standard kind of ball socket ratchet system. And uh, I've never had any problem with those bigger pieces. This is smaller stuff, the accessories and the vinyl and stuff that will end up falling off the figures. But this, I got to hand it to Mafex. They're really killing it. <laughs> so now... You got that unit one. He's regrown his arm of energy. I want to go with a hand of... Let's do the standard, that splayed out. Very typical Ava hand. Uh, at least you see unit one and unit two in that position a lot. Yo, what's up? Slap me five, son. Um, I've also got here the alternate chest piece let's see how that pops off to expose the core all right it's easy two little slotted pieces there and here's our core version kind of exposed your weak point sorry shinji you exposed your weak point and there's also i haven't shown here an open back piece where you would insert that uh small little entry plug that we got let's uh let's plug in the umbilical as well although this technically you know we're looking at a scene here in the film where the umbilical has already been severed and uh he's running on battery power to the point of he runs out and then the uh unit one goes berserk on him but uh so i guess no umbilical cord for this one the halo interestingly enough it clips in right below i guess right above it's hard to describe it's like the the, the helmet part of uh, unit one there's like a hole in the back of it 
and you can insert the halo. I don't know if I'm going to get it this episode. Fuck. That's tight. Let's see. Let's see. It's pro- it's problematic with the with the de- the um the dainty figures if I could because you don't have anything to push against. Like I don't want to break his horn off, so I don't want to push against the shoulders. You know, I'm not going to fuck with the halo right now. Although we need the halo. Damn it. Got to have a halo. You know what? I'm going to do this by removing the head. I think that's I think that's the safe bet. Take the head off. And restart the theme song. That's what I always say. I'm going to check in with the uh, chat here as I'm attempting this. This is a lot easier by by removing the headpiece and and (laughs) not having the whole figure dangling underneath you. Incom on the Twitch chat wonders if this is a... Figure ASMR. You know, I've never done figure videos. Never really used action figures as a source for for uh, creating videos. And I sure as fuck have never done an ASMR thing before. Um, maybe that is a new figure ASMR. You just merge them together. Shit. But I, I tend to stay away from the trends. I feel like... I've almost avoided ever doing a figure unboxing. You know, figure updates, that's my boy Rocco's thing. Oh, oh. You know. I went, oh. He does the figure updates, and I leave that to him. He's a master in that realm. You know, he figure update the movie you guys got this year, which was fantastic. But uh, I I will say, you know, um, having so many figures sitting around in boxes still unopened, like that... Union Creative Revoltech was, I mean, 2015, that thing's probably been sitting there. My Mafex here's been sitting there since Christmas when Rocco gave that to me. So uh, maybe this is a, a, a new way I can actually get to some of these figures because I got so much um, NECA stuff. I've got a lot of uh, a lot of Comic-Con exclusives, things that I've collected over the years and never opened. Maybe I don't want to open some of those. Might never be a Comic Con again. Who knows? <laughs> it's gonna be worth something. Three hundred dollar on eBay. Okay, got that fucking Halo on. It took a little bit, but uh, Halo's on. We've got the Post Zerule Unit One Awakened here. I think we're just about. Well, let's. Let's raise that up like he's giving a toast. And then I do want to use that hand that came with the ball. Zerul's core as he's ready to push on through. And this actually is reminding me more as I'm setting this figure up of like what that scene is and what this scene represents in the film. You know, he's not stopping an attack. He's reaching into the core of Zerul to pull out uh, Ray, who was who was eaten. The Zerul angel rips uh, Unit 2 and Unit 0 to pieces and swallows Ray along with parts of her Unit uh, 0 Evangelion. And then Shinji has to totally lose his shit and finally grow a pair, reaching down into the depths of of the angel's core and retrieving and pulling Ayanami back out. It's kind of the big moment why I appreciate that uh, unit uh, or why I appreciate that Ava 2.0 film is that for one of the first times ever you see Shinji like seriously man the fuck up and do something. It might be you know uh, leading to the end of the world as he knows it but man Finally, the fucking boy does something. You can open... Look at that. You, you can open the back. I, I swapped out the uh, the back piece to now have the open version. Let's put the... Can you fit the whole entry plug in? No, no. It's, that's way too long. So, yeah, it's just for that little tail end entry plug. The little back piece. Oh, man. That's uh, right there. A pretty handsome fig. I'm going to say myself. Look at that. Stands on his own. 
probably might need the the help of a stand with this one. Some of the the Avas are so lanky, you know, that's not a figure with like a huge base. They got little stick legs like me. Where me and Unit One are built very similar. Oh, very similar. Let's go to a little close up on that now too. Show off this figure in full posed and fully realized. Look at that. Get rid of the stand here. Oh, I do like this. I uh, I might have to get into more of the Mafex line. <laughs> I know. Say it isn't so. I'm gonna start draining my bank accounts. But uh, I do appreciate a really, really nice detailed and the flat paint job. Some stuff's shiny, like you got the shoulders are like a gloss, but the purple and the orange uh, is like a nice flat color. And uh, it almost looks like Halloween theme. I'm going to go trick-or-treating. Uh, that's it for uh, the Mafex Unit 1, guys. <laughs> Let's hear it for him. We've done two figures and a record. So technically, you got three reviews. I would recommend all three. You got uh, number one, if you're an audiophile, the stuff Mondo does, the Death Stranding soundtrack's about to come out. I think it's three discs, all 180 gram vinyl, all beautifully. Ah, beautifully pressed. Uh, I would recommend the Mondo stuff. I I'm a big fan of the Revoltech figures and uh, this this solid or this uh, Venom Snake that was put out by Union Creative Vulcan Vulcan Log. That's another thing I'm still not that familiar with the Vulcan Log or Union Creative, but it is a Revoltech by Kaido, and I do probably say that wrong as well. <laughs> As I do recommend the Revoltech figures. I'm, I'm a big fan of Revoltech stuff. And now that I have stepped into the world of the Mafex, I will say that I'm a big uh, Mafex fan too. So, I mean, shouts out. I might be uh, checking out some other stuff that these companies put out in future streams. Uh, I told you earlier that uh, I have a big tattoo of this figure here right now. So, while we sign off let me let me change into something a little more <laughs> revealing and uh get yourselves a good look here at the awoken unit one rescuing uh, uh ray for the first time in his fucking life shinji just grew a pair and got in there thank god boom hey, look at that close up i got all the tech here don't worry going off <laughs> this is that sound in uh, the old Resident Evil games when you would change costumes in the uh, closet once you beat the game and you got the key and it would just sound like this and then they'd be revealed and you'd see Jill in a Regina costume I'm so Happy. I know, Sean. I'm happy, too. I'm fucking pissed, though, that they didn't put it in the Resident Evil 3 remake. It was dance class. I'm so fucking pissed. There it is. Uh, thanks again, guys, for joining. <laughs> Let's get a good look now here at... Uh, wow, why can't we show that? Probably. Why am I going back to the wrong touch screen? I, I got a damn stream deck. I should use it. So as you can see here, it's kind of hard to tell, but the, the, the whole theme of this sleeve was this scene in particular. You got, uh, now can I get on this? Sorry, unit one. Oh God. You got, uh, you got Ray down here kind of swimming in the ether after she's been absorbed by that Zerul bastard. Uh, how do I show that? There's a kind of floating down look at him. 
2.0 redesign of Zerul. But then the piece de resistance. Here, I'll switch to this one. You got... Oh, that lighting's so fucking blown out. Never mind. You got, uh, you got your boy... Unit 1... Right up there. It's kind of hard to flatten him out. And, you know, Ray is clutching that cassette tape, that SDAT. And uh, I'm waiting to see what the final movie has to offer. I might fill this in with track 25 or 26, which has a lot of meaning to the show and the rebuild movies. Unless there's something else I add to that to be revealed uh, come June. But uh, there's my reawoken Unit 1 in all his glory with his energy arm kind of flaming and pulsating with S2 engine all the way down to the boy in that plug himself. You got Ikari-kun, and he, it's kind of hard to get the uh, glare off of that, but he's reaching down through the ether to try to rescue his sweet maiden, Ayanami. A little show and tell from my PPS offices on the Mega64 channel. Thank you guys for watching. This has been Garrett's Fig Unboxing. A few of you guys thought maybe it was going to be the Fig Revolution all over again. You'll have to check my YouTube for those. I don't know if a third is on the works, but if it is, you'll be the first to know here at Mega64. Thanks again. We sure do love you. We'll see you next time.